Welcome in to the second edition of Duval Daily on this fine Monday, April 25th. We are three days away from the 2022 NFL Draft. Feels like it's probably going to be the longest three days of our lives. At least for me, I know I'm going to be, uh, you know, just out here monitoring all the buzz, trying to decipher what's happening, what's not happening. The latest is Trayvon Walker is now the betting favorite to be the Jaguars' first overall selection on Thursday night. Trayvon Walker is an edge defender out of Georgia. Here is a press release from Odds Checker, who always fills us in on some good information here. Uh, Like I said, they have Trayvon Walker favored to be the first overall pick. Here we go. Three weeks ago, Aiden Hutchinson was a lock. Odds makers gave him minus 300 odds or an implied 75% chance to be the pick. Now he's given plus 150 odds or an implied 40% chance. Replacing him as the new favorite is Trayvon Walker. Walker's rise has been one of the most amazing things to watch this offseason. Three weeks ago, he was given plus 325 odds or an implied 23.5 chance to be the pick at one. Now, with just days to go, Walker is given minus 155 odds or an implied 60.8% chance. That's right. According to the odds makers, according to the betters, Trayvon Walker has a 60.8% chance to be the first overall pick. Aiden Hutchinson is still in second at plus 150 with a 40% chance. Ike Mekwanu is plus 1,000. Um, or excuse me, he was plus 1,000 on 4-3-2022, April 3rd, that is. Today, he is plus 600. So again, we've got Trayvon Walker at minus 155, Aiden Hutchinson at plus 150, and Ike Mekwanu at plus 600. Boy, I think the Lions would be pretty excited about that. At number two, have Aiden Hutchinson fallen to them. But yeah, Trayvon Walker is now the 60% favorite to go number one overall. This is a guy that I think undoubtedly the Jaguars need someone to go across from Josh Allen and create disruption and hold the point of attack and be a difference maker. Is Trayvon Walker that? We've talked ad nauseum about him on here. Of course, I chatted with Ian Cummings earlier today uh, of Pro Football Network. You can go check that out on our earlier video or wherever you're listening. Um, We talked about Trayvon Walker, Aiden Hutchinson, all the options at one overall. But just to talk a little bit about Trayvon Walker here, this is a guy that is not a productive pass rusher at this point. Was he asked to be a productive pass rusher at Georgia? That is... I mean, a legitimate question, and and I think based on his usage, he wasn't asked to be that all that much. But when he was asked to pin his ears back, which, again, was not often, it did not look pretty in terms of his ability to bend. I didn't think you saw him his ability to to push up field and, and, then, and then flatten at the top of the arc and collapse that pocket. You did not see moves and counter moves frequently strung together. He's not a player that at this time is ready to, you know, contribute as a edge rusher, as an edge, edge pass rusher. Is he ready for first and second down to play on base and, and to help you against the run? Absolutely. Six foot five, 35 inch arms. He's 272 pounds, runs like a gazelle, has incredible power, big, strong hands. Uh, but Are you drafting the guy at number one overall to be a quality starter that is going to help you against the run? Or are you trying to draft someone who is going to be an impact pass rusher that can also play the run? To me, that's Aiden Hutchinson. I know Aiden Hutchinson does not have the length that a lot of teams look for, but he is a unique talent. I think his athleticism is severely underrated. He's a technician. He's able to threaten the edge with speed. He's able to bend at the top of the uh, arc. You see examples of that, more examples of that with the Hutchins than you do with Trayvon Walker. I don't think it's consistent yet, but perhaps his testing at the combine showed that there's more to unlock there. And then when you talk about working inside with swim moves, uh, with long arms, with counters, Aiden Hutchinson's got that for days. And he's also an extremely stout run defender. 
uh, on the play side and on the back side. He, he's a good run and chase run defender as well. I just think he's going to be a guy that you come in, you put in your starting lineup, you forget about it. He's going to be a producer all three downs. He's going to help Josh Allen. He's going to help the rest of the team around him. Uh, and he's going to be a, a, a team leader, a tone setter, a guy that I just think is pretty much as can't miss as you can find in this class. So you look at Trayvon Walker. Yeah, I do think you're getting a guy who can win on base downs right away. Is he a guy that can help you in the pass rush department now? Certainly not. And even when you look ahead to a two-year projection, me and Ian Cummings talked about this as well. I don't know how you can project Trayvon Walker to be a better pass rusher than Aiden Hutchinson in two years. And if you're talking about a guy who you drafted with the first overall pick, who's not able to be a double digit sack type of player for you, what are you doing? How are you helping Trevor Lawrence? Are you getting turnovers? Are you getting off the field on third down on defense? I'm not seeing Trayvon Walker helping you with that this year. Now, you have to look at the range of possibilities. Is it possible that Trayvon Walker gets on an NFL team, gets into camp, and develops a couple moves and counter moves, and he's able to be effective because he is so long and athletic and powerful? That is possible. I think it's very possible. So when you're betting on Trayvon Walker, I think that's what you're betting on happening. Do I think it's likely that he's able to develop into that within year one or year two to the point where he'd be a more valuable player for your football team than Aiden Hutchinson, a Kayvon Thibodeau, or even a Jermaine Johnson, for that matter? I really have a hard time betting on that. Again, I'm not slamming this guy as a prospect. I think he is a quality edge defending prospect. I think he should go in the 5 to 15 range in a typical draft. He's been driven up the board basically because he's an unbelievable athlete, a a home run type of swing at the position that you're just not getting from Aiden Hutchinson, according to some. I still think Aiden Hutchinson has untapped potential. Like I said, I think he can improve uh, his consistency in terms of being able to flatten at the top of the arc, being able to push into the backfield Um, from the outside versus working back inside or working through with that bull rush, with that power. Um, I think there's untapped potential in Aiden Hutchinson. I really do believe that. And an underrated athlete in his own right. But Aiden Hutchinson is still the second favorite to go, number one overall, like I said. He is plus 150. Ike Mekwanu is plus 600. He's the third favorite, if you will. And Ike Mekwanu, I would not be surprised by at all. Uh, Apparently, Doug... So this is how how everything's being framed right now. Doug Peterson is a big Ike Mekwanu guy, according to multiple reports, according to Dilla, several people around the league and and, um, others that I've spoken to are saying that Ike Mekwanu is Doug Peterson's guy. Trayvon Walker is Trent Baalke's guy. And Aiden Hutchinson is Shad Khan's guy. So this is a new organization here. You're talking about Trent Baalke holding over from next year or last year. You're talking about Doug Peterson joining the mix. Those two leading the franchise forward. And of course, Shad Khan, he's going to have the final say if he wants it. It appears that he's been more involved in the entire process this year. He's been in town a lot more. He's been in the facility a lot more. Uh, He went to the Combine. I'm not sure if that was his first one, but it certainly seemed like it based on some of the comments that you heard from him regarding the the combine or maybe questions that he had for Trent Paulke regarding the combine. But it looks like there is a power struggle happening between the top three guys in the organization. Of course, Shad Khan is the top dog, but is he going to demand that his coach and, and GM take a certain player? That does not seem like something Shad Khan would do. Certainly hasn't done that in the past. Is is Doug Peterson going to win out with his his love for Ike Mekwanu? Is Trayvon Walker going to be the pick? Uh, you know, Trent Baalke has been highly connected to Trayvon Walker. Uh, is there a power struggle happening? I'm not sure. Could this all be posturing? 
by the front office and by by owner Shad Khan trying to drum up some interest. Um, they've talked ad nauseum about being open to trading back. And if those phone lines aren't ringing, which they certainly have not been, even according to Trent Balky, are they just trying to drum up some interest because they really want to move out because they feel comfortable with several several prospects? As they stated this past Friday, they're down to four guys. In all honesty, I would hope that less than a week before the draft, when you have had months to figure out who you're looking at, why don't you know at this point, honestly? Come on. That doesn't make sense to me. I think that they very well may know, and they just are posturing. Uh, also, when you look at um, what we're three days away from the 2022 NFL draft, from the first overall pick, you mean to tell me that the owner, the head coach, and the general manager of the team with the first overall pick are not yet aligned with who they're going to take? They're all standing in different corners here? I mean, I don't want to jump to assumptions because I really don't know if this pot is posturing, if if this is intentionally being leaked by by the team, or if it's really just the dysfunction that you've seen in Jacksonville for for far too many years. Uh, and we might find that out, you know, this weekend, Thursday night. We'll certainly see who the first overall pick is. I don't think they're going to convince anyone to trade up for that pick. I don't see it happening. But Trayvon Walker, as of Monday, April 25th, three days away from the 22 NFL draft, is the betting favorite to go number one overall to your Jacksonville Jaguars. Would you guys be happy with that? Uh, would you be stoked to see Trayvon Walker just kind of travel on down the road from Georgia down to Duval and, and try to wreak havoc? Like I said, it takes a lot of projection if you're asking Trayvon Walker to come in and be a productive pass rusher. He's going to come in and absolutely be able to set the edge for you, be a good run defender, eat up blocks, make splash plays all over the field with his athleticism, but is he going to be a consistent pass rusher? We haven't seen it yet. Georgia didn't ask him to do it all that often. Um, even when they did, you didn't see a ton of consistency uh, or really the ability to stack and counter moves. It's it's a tough one for me. But that's going to do it. Just wanted to come at you guys, let you know. Trayvon Walker is now the betting favorite for the Jacksonville Jaguars at number one overall with Aiden Hutchinson in second and Ike Mekwanu, the third guy on the list there. And with Ike Mekwanu, real quick, I think – his ability to get out and move in space and to dominate at the second level makes a ton of sense for the Jaguars' expected wide zone rushing attack. You have Phil Rauscher coming over from Minnesota. You have Doug Peterson, who's already employed a lot of zone looks in his offense. Um, I don't think Ike Mekwanu is ready to come in and protect Trevor Lawrence at left tackle from day one. But according to Tony Pauline and several others, it looks like the Jaguars are close to wrapping up a long-term extension with Cam Robinson to play left tackle, which would mean if you selected E.K. McQuanu, you'd likely be playing him at left guard this year with Walker Little and Jawan Taylor competing for the right tackle spot. If you draft E.K. McQuanu at number one overall to play guard, you can certainly argue the value of that pick. But would he come in and upgrade your left guard spot? Absolutely. I think you'd be looking at a much better overall offensive line. He is a nasty, mauling, athletic, just beast of a football player. He, he needs to improve in pass protection, especially with the vertical sets. He has sloppy footwork. His hands aren't, aren't always consistent. He has been improving in that regard throughout his career. But I think putting him inside at left guard in year one could really uh, mask some of his deficiencies and allow you to refine his technique and get him to be the best possible player that he can be moving forward uh, after year one or two. But again, if Cam Robinson is your left tackle long-term and you have Walker Little, who you drafted in the second round of the 2021 NFL draft, how does drafting Ike Mekwanu fit into that picture? Are you not trusting Walker Little to play tackle? 
Um, and Ike Mekwanu has no evidence or, or history of playing right tackle. So assuming he can do that is a bit of a stretch in my mind. Uh, a lot of guys have struggled making the transition from left tackle to right tackle. If you don't have evidence of any, him being able to do that, that's a risk. Um, but I do think Ike Mekwanu would be a tone setter. He would definitely improve the offensive line, especially if you're playing him at guard. But again, I question the value of taking that player at one overall if you are, in fact, trying to uh, or, or on the verge of locking Cam Robinson down to a long-term extension, which I don't believe is a is a sound move anyways, when you're talking about an average to slightly above average starting left tackle, why do you need to make him your long-term option when you have an Evan Neal on the board at number one overall? You have Ike Mekwanu, uh that you could also target if you if you feel he is a better fit for your scheme. So it's tough for me. Uh, I'm not really sure if the Jaguars are going down the right road with some of the roster decisions that they're making. I do think they're in a much better position to find success this year under Doug Peterson, uh, a professional football coach who knows offense. He knows how to develop quarterbacks at the NFL level. You've got Trevor Lawrence, Christian Kirk. Your running back should be coming back. Hopefully your offensive line is improved. I think there's a chance to see a much improved team but how much improved, a lot of that's going to be determined on Thursday night and throughout the rest of the summer as this team continues to work together and gel together. But that's going to do it, Duval. Again, Trayvon Walker, the favorite to be number one. You can follow myself on Twitter, at Jordan DeLugo, Generation Jaguar, at Generation Jag. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube and check ginjag.com for all the latest Jaguars news and analysis and Duval gear.